Hi guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you today. And today we're working on another edition of my Project Stormtrooper. That is my personal gaming rig that we're going to be building over the next few months. And today we're going to be looking at some more water cooling parts because I'm planning to build a full CPU and GPU loop for just under £200. So we're going to be looking at some of those parts today, including compression fittings, the pump reservoir combo that I'm using that's sat behind me here. Um, and also going to show you the coolant that we're using and a few other bits and bobs as well. Now, I was planning to get this full loop built within the next few weeks, but as you know recently, there's been lots of rumors about Intel 9th generation CPUs dropping in August, at some point in August, probably being announced on August the 1st. Now, this is my Intel test rig at the moment, and I haven't had a chance to build another one yet because I thought these CPUs would be coming out a little bit later. So what I'm going to have to do is test some of those CPUs first because I know you want to see some more gaming benchmarking videos because it's been a while since I've done some. So I'm going to be testing lots of those CPUs, probably going to start off with the cheaper, more lower budget ones because I know that's what most of you are buying, then maybe move into some higher end stuff. Then hopefully once I get another Intel motherboard, we can uh, get this water cooling build done. Also, one thing I want to say as well, um, I'm going to start doing more regular live streams. You can see I've got this little mixer behind me here. I'm going to be using OBS as well, so there's going to be chat screen live going, and they're just going to be general PC Q&As while I'll probably play Battlefield. Planning to do um, another one tonight, so make sure you come and check that out. Any PC questions, anything about builds, we're going to be chatting about that whilst playing some computer games. But that's enough about that anyway. I'm sure you want to see these water cooling parts, so let's go in and take a closer look. So we're going to start off by looking at some of the tools, tubing, and the coolant that I've bought. Now, I haven't included the tools in there because, you know, when you buy a tool, you use it again and again and again, and you don't essentially need it for this build either, but, you know, it's just nice to have. So I've got the excess PC tube cutters, you know, could easily cut someone's finger off with those, which is nice. Um, and they are £6.50, or you could even cut, cut some cigars with it if you want. So I've got those for cutting the tubing, but you could just use a hacksaw if you've already got one, like a little junior hacksaw. And the EK filler bottle as well, which is around about £6.50 as well. Um, you could just use a cheap funnel from Poundland, which is a pound, but you know, I just decided to buy them. Moving on to the tubing. Um, now, I've only priced up my build using one meter of this because I'm going to use just under a meter from what I've measured out. And so I've got the EK Duraclear. Now, the tubing size that I'm going to be using is 38858. So that's 1610 for anyone. And here is the tubing. So it's nice and thick as well, so we're not going to get any horrible kinks. And because I'm building in the Fantex Pre 300 case, I'm only using like really short little cable runs like that. So I'm not going to get any horrible sags either, like you'd get with soft tubing in like a really big tower case. So it's going to look really nice, I think. Moving on to the coolant. Now, I originally bought the Blood Red, but I wasn't too happy about it. So I'm going to be using the Mayhem's Pastel Red. Um, which I think is going to look really nice. We've got the white and black build with like the pastel red coolant. It's going to give me a sort of stormtrooper, a bit of Sith color to it as well. So um, yeah, I think this is going to work really well. Now, I was thinking about getting everything to premix it myself, and I will do that in the future, but because it's my first build, I just thought, buy a premix. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's got all the additives, everything that I need in it, ready to go. But in the future, of course, if I get into water cooling quite a lot, I'll be making my own fluids up. Moving on to the fittings then, well I didn't want the cheapest fittings going, I didn't want barb fittings, I looked at compression fittings from China, um, I looked at the cheapest and then I looked at the, sec you know, the next ones up, like something that was maybe a brand, and that was Barrow fittings, and to be honest they weren't really any cheaper for me to not, to not just buy them in the UK. So again we've got these 1610 compression fittings, got the nice o-ring on there, the only thing I'd say the difference between maybe like a EK fitting is that you don't have the Allen key down in there for tightening them up. But again, nice feeling fittings, feel really well made. Um, I have eight of these, they're about £3.50 each, so that's almost £3 cheaper than an EK fitting. It might only sound like all three quid, I'd rather go with EK, but £3 on eight fittings is £25. You know, if you're using more fittings than that, it becomes very expensive. Fittings can almost become the most expensive part of your build. So I'll just put that down. And then there's a couple of other fittings, which I have included in the price of my two, just under £200 budget. But I don't know if I'm going to use them yet. So I have 190 degree angle. Now, one thing I would say compared to maybe like a Bits Power fitting, they are certainly stiff. But by the time you sort of have them mounted into place and stuff, you even see now that I'm moving that a lot easier when you've got a bit of grip on them. 
okay they don't proper spin around but it's not that very hard and at least they're going to stay in position as well once you put them there they're going to lock nice and tight so i have one 90 degree and then i have one of their 45 degree fittings um now both of these sort of rotary fittings again as you can see very stiff um, they cost about £4.50 and there's loads of fittings, they do extension tubes, loads of bits and bobs, even do hardline fittings, you can get them all off eBay, a couple of really nice sellers on there. Um, and I've read some reviews about them and they've got very good reviews, these Barrow fittings. Like I said, it, it could end up being the most expensive part you buy. Now the last piece I'm going to be showing you today is the pump. Now I will be doing a separate video in about a week or so um, because my radiator and my CPU block have just turned up but I want to put that in a separate video. Um, and this is the Magical DCP450. This is a pump reservoir combo which costs just over £30. It's got mixed reviews, it's got lots of very good reviews, but there's a couple of bad reviews as well, and I'll talk about that in a second and the reason why it's got a couple of bad reviews. But as you can see, we've got a three phase motor, SATA power with monitoring, um, integrated water reservoir, pumps up to 450 litres an hour, not a lot, but for me, I'm building a really small loop. Um, just a very small CPU, GPU loops, that's fine. Easy fill ports, uplift height of 2.4 meters. I don't think it quite goes that far from other videos I've seen. Extreme low noise, uh, long life expectancy and easy wall mounting. I'm just gonna put it up over there, are we? A few more things over there. So it uses six watts of power. Not a particularly good packaging, but you know, that's what you get when you buy cheaper brands. They don't spend a fortune on all the packaging and stuff but yeah this isn't going to be you know something that i use for years i i'm expecting it not to last a super amount of time if it if it dies on me in a few months i'm not bothered because you know this is my first gen of building water cooling and i'm going to be buying more stuff for it at a later date as well so here is the pump reservoir combo which we'll get out in a minute so then you just get a couple of couple of uh, different types of mounts in here so you get these two sort of long bracket mounts maybe put them on the side of radiator different types of radiator mounts and then you have these are the ones I'm most likely going to use so again you could screw those onto a radiator directly clip on I think those mounts are a bit more use if say your radiator was quite tight up to your case so you've got these fittings let's have a little look That's sturdy, it's not going anywhere. Giving that a good pull there, giving it a good tug, boys. Make sure you tug it hard. And then there's just loads of screws. I wouldn't say any of those can screw into a radiator, so you're probably gonna need some radiator screws. And then a little Allen key. So obviously we're getting these fittings off. How about I start setting this up and talk about the two issues, yeah? Should we talk about the two issues? Or would you like a measurement first? Do a quick measurement. I'm sure you can get the specs offline. I know a lot of people, you want to know the heights of them really, don't you? It's going to fit in your case. So it's 140 in height and about 70, 80 millimeter, seven, eight centimeters in width. Now, the two complaints with this then. The first complaint, which has been addressed um, and watercooling.co.uk, their um, staff have addressed this. Let me plug this into the out. And that was that these were leaking. Um, that was just a batch. It was about three, four years ago. This this has been out for a while and had a couple of revisions um, and that has been resolved. That has since been resolved. Now, the other issue, and one thing you might notice about this, if you look for this cooler in the UK, none of the photos show it with this tube coming down and they only show it with one fill port, right? They only show it with one fill port and that, is because that's what it was supposed to be for, literally just for filling. You were always supposed to go in and out of here, but people used it as a top filler with tubing going into it, you know, not just to put your liquid in. And because of that, this didn't have the same seal as what you had here, so it leaks. So that is why they have updated it and put this tube in, which I think is a really good thing from sort of a cheap company to actually listen and make a change you know, put that in so we're not getting the leaks up the top. Now, pretty much every model you look at in the UK, their listings, it won't show this one. It will show it with just a single one, but this is the one that you will get now. This is the one you'll get. Um, and if you don't get it, this one's from Overclockers. So this is the one you'll get from overclockers.co.uk. And there's also the SATA power here, like a free pin. 
So yeah, that's the one you'll get. So we've got that one in there. What do we need? Another, just put another one in the top. See, so as you can see now, they've put this nice O-ring in the top and you've got your top down tube as well. So yeah, like I said, already just said, I really like that, you know, they've some people have raised an issue and just gone, do you know what? We're gonna address it. Now, from everything I've been reading about compression fittings, you don't actually have to tighten them all the way up. You sort of just tighten it until it, until it bites and then just give it a little tighten. If you can't pull it off, it's fine. We're gonna test that theory because I'm probably gonna leave this running for 24 hours anyway, just to make sure that it hasn't got any of those leak issues I was talking about. So make sure you ask me in the comments section how that went. But yeah, you don't need to fully tighten compression fittings. So you might find that you do need to, depending on what tubing and stuff you're using. But on certain fittings, you won't need to as much. Remember guys, this is the first time you're playing with water cool and stuff as well. So it looks like I'm struggling. You are gonna shred your fingers as well with compression fittings. I'm getting gloves for when I do the build. So I just felt that tightness. And then I'll just give it that little extra turn. That's it. There you go. Let's get it powered up. So I've just hooked up the three pin fan cable, so that's definitely a signal cable. Now I just need to, now I'm gonna get the pump going. Ooh. There we go. There's a few bubbles in there. Now I'm just gonna run the fan tuning software to see if I've got control over it from the signal cable. Q fans. I can see that as my fans are ramping down. Sort of see the fluids not moving as much. That is virtually silent right now. You cannot hear that bad boy. So I'm just gonna let the fan profile run, then we'll just step it up and some step it up and see how it gets on. So I've attempted to plug it into a couple of different headers. Now um, plugging it into my AIO pump header, it's just not reading it at all. Even when I switch to DC mode, it just doesn't recognize that it's there. Now plugging it into my chassis header, um, I'm even getting it, depending on how it's reading it, it's either saying that it's running at 2030 RPM, which is sort of AIO pump sort of speed, um, up to 2600. It's really weird, it's not quite reading it, so I need to work on that a little bit more. But one thing I have noticed here, you can see it moving away there. Now as I turn the fans up, And just crank them up to full speed now it's definitely shifting more it's moving about more when it's at full speed so that it's doing something it's probably going to move enough fluid away from my loop let's just turn it back down to uh non-noisy fan mode but it's definitely going to be moving enough for the small loop that i'm doing really like the tubing look as you can see look no sag from that either no sort of nasty kinks like you might get with certain thinner tubing so there is part two of my water cooling build for Project Stormtrooper. You've seen some parts there. This was part one. Um, this was setting up the graphics card using the EK Thermosphere. So make sure you go and check that out. Links to the playlist in the description. Like I said, I know you're going to want to see those 9th gen CPU benchmarks first. So after we've done that, we'll probably get back to this. There's also going to be another episode of the water cooling as well. Um, episode three will be up within the next week. Um, I'm going to show you my CPU water block, which cost £13 and my radiator as well full copper radiator ordered from china so if you want to see those videos make sure you subscribe like i said link to the playlist below and i'll be back with some more videos real soon and make sure you check out the live stream later